Sub-Saharan Africa will need $425 billion by 2030, says the African Development Bank. Senate passes supplementary budget 2021 for second reading. Federal government, states and local government councils share 605.958 billion euro for the month of May. As oil prices rise and OPEC determines to monitor rising debts in member countries. This is Business Express on the network service of the NTA and we are reaching you from Abuja, the nation's capital. I am Leah Katung, Baba Tunde. The 2021 supplementary budget is a key step towards achieving Nigeria's renewed fight against insecurity and ensuring that its major population is vaccinated against COVID-19 by the year 2022. This is coming from the Senate as it unanimously passed the supplementary budget for a second reading less than 24 hours after it was received from the executive. 722.3 billion naira is earmarked as country for the Development Fund for Capital Expenditure, while 173.4 billion naira is as recurrent non-debt expenditure. The supplementary budget is for capital expenditure. I'm borrowing from the bigger stock of the financing item, which is 715 billion. The Federation Accounts Allocation Committee FAC at its Wednesday meeting through virtual conference shared to the three tiers of government a total sum of 605.958 billion as Federation allocation for the month of May 2021. A statement by Director Information Charles Umwudu reveals that from this amount, inclusive cost of collection to the Nigeria Customs Service, DPR, and the Federal Inland Revenue Service, the federal government received 242.1 two billion era. the states received 194.195 billion era. the local government councils got 143.742 billion era, while the oil producing states received 26.901 billion era as derivation the communique issued by the federation accounts allocation committee at the end of its meeting indicated that the gross revenue available from the value added tax VAT for May 2021 was 181.078 billion era as against 176.71 billion era distributed in the preceding month of April, resulting in an increase of 4.368 billion era. Now, quality service delivery, empathy, and care are the riders behind the launch of a service compatibility Servicum charter at the Abuja Office of Pension Transition Arrangement Directorate, Pitad. This is targeted at assuring senior citizens of improved quality service and accountability. The charter is expected to improve service compatibility standards and evolve over time. And so we can hold them much more accountable. Huh? All of the standards we see beyond being standards, there are promises that must be kept. And so these promises, when kept, will touch the lives. Services would, would improve and then we'll have quality services touching the lives of pensioners. Remember the pensioners are special customers that require special treatment. And so all of the commitments in the service charter is to help manage the pension administration effectively in this agency. And so when properly implemented, services will improve, 
the pensioners will be satisfied and they will, in addition, be delighted. The charter reels out what we uh, stand for, the quality of service we give, timelines associated to the quality of service, so that our pensioners can hold us responsible when we don't um, do what we have said. Transition Arrangement Directorate Pichard believes this would accelerate quality service delivery, quick response to complaints, requests and issues that are of concern to pensioners. The rail transportation data for the first quarter of 2021 reflected that a total of 424,460 passengers traveled via the rail system in the first quarter of 2021 as against 647,055 passengers recorded in Q1 2020 and 134,817 in the fourth quarter of 2020 representing 34.4% decline year year and 2484 percent growth quarter on quarter. Data from the National Bureau of Statistics show that a total of 10,511 tons of volume of goods and cargo traveled through the rail system in the first quarter of 2021 as against 18,484 recorded in the first quarter of 2020 and 35,736 in the fourth quarter representing 43.13% decline year on year. Revenue generated from passengers in the first quarter of 2021 was put at 892.4 million naira as against 398.9 in the fourth quarter of 2020. Similarly, revenue generated from goods and cargo in the first quarter of 2021 was put at 26.1 million naira as against 82.5 million naira in the fourth quarter of 2020. To ensure faster recovery of Africa's economies, the African Development Bank is set to sponsor mass production of vaccines for the continent. President of the bank, Akin Wume Adishino, made this known at the opening of the 56th annual meetings of the Board of Governors of the bank and the 47th annual meeting of the Africa Development Fund, holding virtually with the theme, Building Resilient Economies in Post-COVID-19 Africa. Better attention to be given to domestic resource mobilization, tackling corruption, building strong institutions for public expenditure and financial accountability and debt management. Now, I know that all our panelists and all of our governors will have lots to share with us as we ponder on these questions. Debt management strategies in Africa need to build in the potential for external shocks and adverse events that constrain fiscal space and result in negative debt-related spillovers. But at the end of the day, we can't keep going through cycles of indebtedness, crisis, restructuring, and recovery. This is bad for long-term growth and living standards. We need to build in a sustainable way ahead. We must all come together to end the pandemic and secure the recovery. This is also an opportunity for us for a call to collective action to uh, include things like acceleration clauses in our, in our credit uh, that we write. It's been storming on opportunities needed to restore the region's economies and livelihoods, share solutions for addressing the COVID-19 vaccine shortage, climate change and debt. Business Express continues after this timeout. <music>
And then, of course, oil prices gained for a second day on Thursday after a bigger than expected drawdown in U.S. crude and gasoline stocks confirmed outlook for robust fuel demand. Which way are oil and other commodities going this Thursday? Stocks in Nigeria resumed this morning in the negative after a dip in Wednesday's session, while Asian shares marked time on Thursday with China nudging lower. Boss Table has global market outlook this Thursday. Shares in Asia-Pacific struggled for direction in Thursday trade after S&P 500 on Wall Street snapped its two-day winning streaks. Overnight, mainland Chinese stocks slip as the Shanghai Composite shed 0.04%, while the Hang Seng Index advanced 0.28%, and the Nikkei was marginally positive. European stocks are expected to open slightly higher on Thursday as global stocks appear to lose direction following comments from the U.S. Federal Reserve officials. Stock futures rose mildly after the market's comeback rally hit a speed bump on Wednesday. Futures on the Dow Jones Industrial Average added 100 points in early morning trade Thursday. The S&P 500 futures and Nasdaq 100 futures both traded in positive territory, while African markets are yet to post new figures this morning as investors hope the bulls will dominate. Boss the Able, Business Express. And of course, we're still remaining with the AFDB and I'm being joined by Paul Alaja of SPM Professionals to look into the issues brought up at the opening of the annual meetings of the Africa Development Bank where economic recovery and vaccines dominated discussions. You're welcome, Mr. Paul. Thank you so very much for having me. Uh, great. So perhaps we begin with the pharmaceuticals. Dr. Adeshino says Africa should be producing and not begging. Do you think Africa has such capacity in the wake of COVID-19? And if yes, what is stalling it? Okay, so um, I, I agree completely with the president of Africa Development Bank that Africa should produce by now. India is currently producing. And we have, uh, and I think it should not just be one country producing in Africa. If you ask me, I think the distribution of Africa for production should be at least two or three countries. So I, I completely agree with you. And when it comes to what is stalling African ability to, to produce vaccines, I think uh, what comes to mind will be three. The first one will be uh, the cost that the fund, you know, Africa has lost a lot of money, which uh, Mr. Adichina alluded to, approximately uh, $315 billion is what Africa lost due to COVID-19. And if you, if the fund required is so much, apart from that, the research required, the research and necessary uh, copyright patent and all of those things that are required within the pharmaceutical world, which Africa should be allowed, if, I mean, just to mass produce uh, for Africa continent to consume. So uh, apart from that, it's political will of African leaders. We know that if, if, if people say that Africans don't have uh, the financial resources, we know that resources are not missing in Africa. What seems to be missing is prioritization of funds into um, what is more necessary. All right. The, no. Alluded to the effort of federal government of Nigeria in ensuring that it curtail an allocated fund to um, to COVID-19 uh, protection and also distancing. This is because federal government prioritizes, it. but this is not the same and it's not true for all African leaders. I hope government in Nigeria will do more and other African countries will follow suit. Okay, still remaining with the pharmaceuticals now. The bank is committing $3 billion to the development of that sector on the continent. How far can this go? I think it can go so far. Uh, 
that they can go as far, but it will not uh, really solve the problem. Nigeria alone requires uh, almost 15 billion dollars. So if Africa Development Bank is giving that um, to members, to countries within Africa to support, yes, it's something meaningful, it's something significant, but it's not sufficient enough to take Africa out of economic and health challenges. We are faced with economic quagmire on one side, we are faced with reducing and bridging revenue on the other side. Recall that among the fastest growing economies in the world, Africa took the charge at the time before COVID. COVID came, shut Africa away from some of the uh, good works that were going within some African countries, notably East Africa and some West Africa, and I can also add some South African countries to all of these mix. Uh, but because of COVID, it destabilized Africa. Nobody prepared for COVID, nobody anticipated COVID, and this is the real issue, the real concern the African, uh, African has. So it's good, but I think Africa would need at least on annual basis, Africa would require a minimum of 40 billion dollars. And I think that is what uh, the African development has done its best. I hope the West and also Asian countries will be look, looking towards this development, particularly if Africa remains the region where they get their natural resources. Okay, let me just take this quote right off Dr. Adeshino. And he says, the challenge of development just got even harder as 30 million people fell into extreme poverty and an estimated 39 million people could fall into poverty by the end of the year 2021. Where's Nigeria in all, in, in, in all of this? Well, uh, according to World Bank and IMF, they both agree that Nigeria has added 7 million people below poverty line. And when you look at efforts of government, such as um, uh, Anchor Borrowers Program, Trader Money, uh, Market Money, and all of those things that the administration has been doing, like I said, it could only do as much. We truly require a lot. IMF has said earlier, and corroborated by UNDP figures, that 42% of Nigerians live below poverty line. This is so true of the entire continent. Apart from that, I also note that a, over 80 million people live under, under multidimensional poverty. These figures happened before COVID. What do you think COVID would have done? Devastation brought several African economies into recession, having even long recession. Some are still battling with their own recession. Thankfully, Nigeria came out of saying you are with 0.11%, now 0.5% GDP growth rate. I understand authorities doing best possible. We may need to do it at a faster rate here in Nigeria. And the same uh, advice is what I'm giving to other African countries. Try best possible to generate more revenue rather than going through debt for financing and also for developmental strife. The thing is, the, uh, the, the challenges of COVID is not going to go overnight, but we'll keep trying best possible to ensure that uh, uh, as, as, as fast as we can, as a country and as an economy, we keep taking uh, people out. Because revenue right now is very low, it's a bit money low, and uh, capacity to generate revenue seems not to also be on the high. Okay, I must sincerely thank you, Mr. Paul Alaja, Senior Partners, SPM Professionals, for sharing your time with us. Thank you so very much for having me. Okay, great. Do have a nice one. And then we'll move straight to Surviving COVID-19 Series. Surviving COVID-19 Series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. I heard about uh, this COVID-19 loan through social media. I could remember during that period of shutdown of this COVID-19 pandemic, I was not able to do a lot of things. And uh, uh, my shock was very bad during that period. Two million was given to me at the month of the November, December 2020. It helped my business uh, a lot. I helped uh, to employ more one or two, and also I, uh, I have shortage of working material, which I've already got a little added to the one I have before. 
at this junction, I would like to say big thanks to the central bank governor and uh, our able president, Mohamed Buhari, that come with this program to assist the business people and to see we, 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 me, I'm even personally um, happy with this idea that Mr. President come with. It assists a lot of citizens in the country. Really, the COVID-19 loan is real. And I myself am a beneficiary of the loan. So it's a good and a good example to the others. And I urge others, please, they should try and do the same. It's real. Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. And of course, we join Abubakar Osori to say thank you to all those making these uh, efforts possible for the MSMEs as the world join, Nigeria joins the world to celebrate the micro, small and medium enterprises. The 441.5 million SMS. MSMEs are registered in Nigeria and experts say this is just a fraction of the real numbers. These MSMEs drive the economy and that explains why the MSMEs were the worst hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. The 2021 United Nations World MSME Day observed 27th day of June every year with the theme MSMEs key to inclusive and sustainable recovery points to the fact that no meaningful growth or economic recovery can be achieved without them. As Nigeria strategizes towards full recovery from the economic impact of COVID-19, Director General of Smeden, Umaru Dikorada, is optimistic that developing and strengthening MSMEs through consumption of made in Nigeria goods and services will be a sure way to achieving this recovery. as much as possible, and that will create a market for the Nigerian MSME. And as we are doing it in Abuja, there is going to be event in all the states of the Federation that will also help in stimulating the development of MSMEs. And then there will also be an MSME award. This MSME award is only to encourage the MSME to do more in their field of endeavor. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning Zainab Shamsuna Ahmed has commended the Nigerian Exchange Limited for its efforts towards deepening the Nigerian capital market. Director of Information and Public Relations of the Ministry, Tijani Mohammed, stated that the minister acknowledged the commitment of the management of the exchange, culminating in the demutualization of it. She called on the management to leverage on technology and innovations which could ease the processes of trading on the exchange and ensure that ordinary citizens could participate in the capital market. In furtherance of this objective, the minister stated that the federal government had directed the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, to marshal out a saving policy and program that would encourage citizens of all economic standing to actively participate in the Nigerian capital market as a means of unlocking the potentials in the market. Chief Executive Officer of the Exchange, Timi, assures the Minister of the support of the Exchange to this administration's efforts in making Nigeria a destination for foreign investment as well as attracting investors. Mr. Popola sought for a reduction on company income tax from 25% to 20%. And still with uh, the Ministry of Finance in a related development, the Securities and Exchange Commission says it recognizes the importance of digital platforms for democratic democratizing access to capital market products and services for greater financial inclusion in the market. The Director General of the SEC, Mr. Lami Do Yuguda, said this at a webinar on digital platforms, New Frontier for Capital Market Inclusion, where he said, as the apex regulator of the Nigerian capital market with a dual mandate to regulate and develop the market, they recognize that the greatest assets of any capital market and any financial market 
is its investors. According to him, the Enhancing Finance in Africa 2020 report on the Nigerian fintech landscape, about 40% of Nigerians were still financially excluded as of December 2018. 51.1% of the excluded population are women. 61.5% are between the ages of 18 and 35. 34% had no formal education and 80.4% reside in rural areas. And with that, we come to the end of Business Express this morning. Remember to keep in touch with us by sending in your comments, observations and suggestions. Also be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NTS channel. Join us again Friday at 3 p.m. for another episode. I'm Leah Kutin. Bye-bye.